Hello, radio friends. This is Brother Bill Shelton of the Right Side Ministry bringing you the Word of God today. I want to remind you that we are on this station the same time and same day each week. If you would like to correspond with this ministry, you can write to the Right Side Ministry, P.O. Box 1346, Berea, Kentucky, 40403. That is, if you have prayer requests, and we do not uh, mention names on the air, but if you would like for me to pray for a specific thing or just pray for you or whatever it may be, you can uh, drop me a card or a letter at that address. Or if you would just like to correspond with this ministry, then you can write to P.O. Box 1346, Berea, Kentucky, 40403. Now, before we go on uh, any further into the program, they will be messages and song uh, brought uh, to you here by the radio station. And we hope each time that there's been a message and song uh, played, that it's been a very spiritually uplift to you. Guile was never found in his mouth. Go to a cross and shed his blood and die for someone like. And I don't understand how this could happen to me. All that I know is, and all I can say is that Jesus had mercy.
evolution is taught by man. They took prayer out of school, and violence filled our land. be removed from their sight But one question I'd like to ask them What's wrong with living right? What's wrong with living right? Can anybody tell me I'm doing what I know to do I'm living for Jesus He's the way, the truth I'm not going where I should go I'm serving Jesus with all my mind Can anybody tell me What's wrong with Living the way I do Different from this world Out of step, oh, how to rule Call me crazy or insane Even tell me I'm not right But one question I'd like to ask you What's wrong with living right? What's wrong with living right? Can anybody tell me? I'm doing what I know to do I'm living for Jesus He's the way, the truth I'm not going where I should go I'm serving Jesus with all my might Can anybody tell me What's wrong with wrong with living right
This is Brother Bill Shelton of the Right Side Ministry Broadcast. Well, today we're going to be speaking out of the book of Mark. The book of Mark in chapter 4. And the title of the message today is going to be The Perfect Storm. The Perfect Storm. You know, we always have storms in our life. Sometimes we either going in a storm or we are coming out of the storm or we in the middle of the storm. So today I'm going to be speaking to you about the perfect storm. And in Mark chapter 4, starting with verse 35, reading through verse 41, and the word of the living God says, and the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there rose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that he was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, Carest thou not that we perish? And he rose, and he rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Heavenly Father, as we only bow before you, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity today to stand behind this microphone and, Lord, proclaim in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, out into the radio land, into the radio audience, and wherever this message may go, Father, we pray that you will just, uh, they will open up their hearts and their minds and be a recipient of what the Word has to say. Father, I pray and ask you to take me and hide me in the cross and speak through me the things that need to be said. Lord, I'm not here to make a name for Bill Shelton, but I'm here to lift up the name of the most high king there is, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray today, Father, for those who are sick in the hospitals and those in the nursing homes, Lord, and 
Father, we just thank you, Father, for uh, touching the sick and let the ones be able to come back to work, Lord, that's been in the hospital, Lord. We just praise your holy name. We know that you still on the throne, Lord, that you still reign. Father, again, we pray, Father, for the leaders of our nation, our state, and our local government. Father, I pray, Lord, for our leaders, Lord, that they would return to you, Father, before it's everlasting too late, and that they would seek your guidance. Father, again, we still thank you that we have the privilege that we can stand and proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. Father, again, we pray, Father, for those who are especially sin sick, those that are lost and undone without you. We pray, Father, that there will be something said today that will, Lord, that will touch that heart, and, Father, that they will come to realization that they need you in their life. Continue to guide us and direct us, Lord, and I will myself over to you, Father. And now just may you speak through me the things that needs to be said. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Now when you go through the storm of life, what do you do to make it safely to shore? There's three lessons that I want you to see today and lesson number one here is in verse 35 and I'll read verse 35 again he says and the same day when the evening was come he said unto them let us pass over onto the other side now the promise here is the, the promise of Jesus that was that wasn't a statement. That was a promise. And it was also prophecy. Now, if Jesus says that we're going to the other side, brother, you are going to the other side. My friend, if Jesus tells an elephant to jump a 40-foot fence, uh, that elephant's going to jump a 40-foot fence. I'm just uh, uh, using that word there. But what Jesus says, when Jesus is in control... Jesus can do anything, anytime, anywhere that he wants to do it. Now, next time you are in a storm, I want you to remember the promise of Jesus. You will get to the other side. My friend, the devil is not going to stop you because Jesus said he told the disciples there in the boat that they were going to the other side, and that's exactly where they went. They went to the the other side. Now that was lesson number one. The lesson number one I said that was the promise of Jesus. Now lesson number two here today is not only you must remember the promise of Jesus, but the next time you're in the storm, rest in the presence of Jesus. Now let's look here in verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ship. Now, Mark wanted us to know that they uh, wasn't only, their boat wasn't the only boat on the sea. That night, there were other ships out there too. Now, you know, I believe Mark put that statement in there, he wanted us to understand the difference between their boat and the boat, <coughs> excuse me, the other boats that Jesus was in the boat. Ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus gets in your boat, he gets into the boat of your life. And when, he, and when you give Jesus your heart, he gets into the boat of your life. When you get the Savior in your ship, you will be safe in the storm. My friend, when Jesus is in uh, the ship with you, you are not going to have anything to worry about. We now look here in verse 37, and he said, There rose a great storm of wind. There rose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat up unto the ship, so that it was now full. Now, they immediately ran into the storm. 
the water was already beginning to fill the boat. This was just this is just like the life we are sailing through life in uh, our life our, everything's going good and all of a sudden we are in the middle of the storm. Just one phone call uh, from the, the hospital or, or the policeman or, or some bad news that somebody come and rang the doorbell or rang the phone in the middle of the night, my friend. You are already uh, uh, in a storm. So sometimes when we are in the storms, we know that Jesus is going to be with you because you don't have to worry about it because Jesus is there with you. I pray today that if you are in a storm that uh, that you can turn and you can look up uh, toward Jesus Christ and he will be uh, with you. So as as you sailing through life in our life or in our life are going everything's going good and all of a sudden we are in the middle of the storm. Just one phone call again from the hospital or the doctor or a knock on the door and our policeman with bad news, you're in a storm. Jesus knew the storm was coming. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing that doesn't happen. There's not a sparrow that doesn't fall from the air that Jesus is not aware of. Jesus knew the storm was coming. There's nothing take him by surprise. Now we might think that uh, people that's not saved and don't believe in God that things just happen like this. God always allows things to happen. So we don't understand a lot of things. But Jesus will always, he's in the storm, he's still in control. So the storm was coming, uh, was coming and nothing takes him by surprise. Now put these two things together here. Jesus said, get in the boat, we're crossing over. My friend, I'm telling you today, when Jesus tells you to get in the boat, we need to be listening to Jesus. My friend, I just had brought a series of messages about Jonah. Uh, Jonah. God told Jonah to go down to Daniel the priest, but Jonah again, he wanted to be disobedient. He went down to Tarsha, and he got a boat to pay the fire thereof, and my friend, he got in trouble. Jonah began to get in the storm. We have a lot of people today, my friend, is in a, a, a terrible shape because they will not listen to the Spirit of God. God, when we we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, we were created in the image of God and we were put on the face of this earth to serve God, but God gave us an uh, uh, a free choice. We can serve Him or serve the devil. Now, if you're not serving Jesus today, you are serving the devil. What are you saying, Brother Sheldon? My friend, you are serving the devil if you're not a born again children of God. We have a lot of people that are born again, but they are the will of the Lord and they need to get their heart right with God. So in the boat we are crossing over. Jesus knew the storm was coming. You know what I'm telling you. Jesus, Jesus led them in the storm. Yes, Jesus led them in the storm. Uh, I don't know why he led them in the storm, but uh, anyway, they uh, were in the storm. So many people think storms... Uh, they think when storm comes, they must be out of the will of God. Lord, <clears throat> what have I done wrong? This... Listen, folks, Jesus, I'm telling you today, uh, they, why does uh, bad things happen to good people? I don't know. I cannot answer that question. But Jesus said, I will never forsake you. I'll never leave you. I will be with you uh, even until the end of the world. My friend, when Jesus is with you, even when you take your last breath, he'll take you by the hand. He will walk you uh, through uh, that valley of the shadow of death. And my friend, when Jesus is with you, we need not to fear. We see the disciples here uh, wasn't in the storm because of disobedience. They were in the storm because of obedience. Sometimes uh, we were in the storm because it had toughened us up. And Jesus is always there with us. We don't have no uh, idea what's uh, what happened. Sometimes there'll be a, a bad accident uh, on, on the road somewhere or another. And they can always something good 
come out of, of in an accident. Brother Sheldon, what are you saying? I don't know why things happen. Maybe you're out of fellowship with the Lord and, and, and God wants to get your attention. And my friend, you are his child. He will take you to the woodshed. He will work on you. He will get your attention one way or the other. I know when, as I was growing up as a boy, my dad told me uh, certain chores I had to do. And when I didn't do those chores, my friend, I suffered the consequences. When we're in the family of God and we are uh, the children of God, uh, things happen. And my friend, you know, it hurts the whole entire family of God. If you... Uh, if you are born again, you are my brother and sister in Christ. When you hurt, I hurt. Why? Because you are then a member of the family of God. You're my brother. You're my sister. And my friend, it hurts. I thank God that he loves me enough that he takes me to the woodshed and he works on me. And he gets me back where I need to be. So the disciples, they wasn't in the storm because of disobedience. They were in the storm because of obedience. They were in the storm because they had done, uh, they weren't in the storm because they had done something, uh, done something right. Now look in verse 38 here just a moment. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow, and they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not perish? Carest thou to not perish? So, they were in the storm because they had done something right. Look, now Jesus was sleeping on the pillar, brother and sisters. Why fear when the Savior is near? Jesus was on the boat. He was on the boat with the disciples. Now, we talked about there... Uh, Lesson number one. We talked about uh, when you go through the storm of life, what do you want to uh, do to make it safe to the shore? The promise. The lesson number one is the promise of Jesus. Now, it wasn't only the promise of Jesus, but it was the prophecy. And lesson number two, not only you must remember the promise of Jesus, but next time you're in a storm, we need to rest. Rest. Rest of Jesus, my friend. Jesus is in the boat. He was in the boat there with the disciples. So in lesson number three, you rely on the power of Jesus. Look in verse 39 then. He said, and he rose and he rebuked the wind and he said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. You know, Peace be still. You know what it really means? What peace be still really means? To muzzle or silent. You really want to know what Jesus said to those waves? Sit down and shut up. Now here is something I want you to see Jesus uh, didn't keep. He didn't keep the storm from striking the boat, but he kept the storm from sinking the boat. My friend, Jesus didn't promise us a perfect bill of health. I know that say some out there has probably went and had physical examination and their perfect bill of health. The doctor has given them a perfect bill of health. Then all of a sudden, uh, 30 days later, they, they fall over and uh, dead because, my friend, I don't know. I can't answer that. Only God can answer that. We don't understand these things, but God is still in control of every human being on this earth. He can take your life whenever He wants to take it. He can grant your life whenever He wants to give it. I'm, I'm here to tell you today, my friend, if, uh, if you don't know Jesus Christ, Today is a day of salvation. Not not next week or next month or next year, but today is the day of salvation. Yes, Jesus didn't keep the, the storm from striking the, the, the waves from striking a boat, but he kept the storm from sinking a boat. You might be in a storm today. 
and you're all worried and, and, and feared of, of what was going to take place, my friend, you need to fear because Jesus is near. If you're a born again child of God and you seek His will in your life and be obedient to Him and say, Lord, please help me. I'm, I'm trying my best to live right, to do, do the right thing. God, please help me. I want to live longer. I want to do what you would have me to do. I want to be a spokesperson for you and witness for Jesus Christ every chance and every opportunity that you have. Jesus, again, he might not keep a storm coming in your life, but he will be with you in the storm. So that's, But that's what he done. He kept the storm from sinking their boat. I like to say this here in closing. The Lord is teaching us a lesson here in verse 40. He says, And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? My friend, I'm telling you today here that number one is fear. There's a lesson here. There is a lesson here in verse 40. The first lesson here in verse 40 is a fear. And number two is faith. Are you in a storm right now? I'd like for you to listen to me right now. You can, <coughs> excuse me, you can face it <coughs> One or two ways. You can face it with fear or you can face it with faith. You know what happened, ladies and gentlemen? You know why that uh, I believe, I said there a moment ago, why uh, Mark was talking about these other little ships and they was other ships? That the, Because I'm telling you, the, 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 the pro here was that Jesus was in the discipleship. Jesus was in the discipleship here and, and he wasn't in these others. So we can face these things one or two ways. Faith. You can say, Brother Bill, what's the difference? Fear looks at the storm. Now listen to me. Fear looks at the storm. Faith looks at the Savior. The greatest danger to the disciples here that night in the boat, it wasn't the storm. The greatest danger was their doubt not being believing in Jesus. He didn't rebuke the disciples because the storm came up. He rebuked them because the lack of faith. He rebuked them because they didn't have enough faith to stay calm in the storm. I know sometimes I things is not going right and I begin to... Uh, get a little nervous about some things and things is just not going right and seem like I'm uh, going into the storm and I, I begin to fear. It's like Peter was uh, walking on, on the water when Jesus told him, asked him, uh, Peter asked him, said, Lord, bid me to come unto thee. I'm using my own words now. And and Jesus said, come higher. And, and Peter stepped out of the boat and, and he began to walk on the water. But all of a sudden he looked down and that's what happened to Peter <clears throat> when he took his eyes off of Jesus. He began to sink. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we do in our life sometimes in Christian life that we begin to sink because we get our eyes off of Jesus. We get ourselves in trouble. I'm telling you what, the devil is walking to and fro on this earth seeking whom he may devour. You might be in the worst storm in your life right now. And you're a Christian and you say, I begin, Lord, help me. What's wrong? Just remember that Jesus was in the boat with the disciples there. He was asleep on the boat. My friend, I'd be I'd have to be on the boat any day. Even if Jesus is asleep, because I know I have nothing to fear. And today, my friend, put your faith and your trust in Jesus. Don't put your faith and trust in man, but put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Put your faith and trust in God, the person that created you in the image of Him. I'm telling you today, folks, we're living in some terrible times. We're living in some terrible times. 
and especially in our nation today in the turmoil and the stuff that it's in. We need people. We need people like Peter. We need to uh, have enough faith to step out of the boat. We need to have uh, the courage to step up to the base and do what God wants us to do instead of hee-hawing around. My friend, we just like them other little ships. We just uh, uh, just uh, floating around. Now we're not uh, doing anything. We don't have Jesus in our boat. And when we have Jesus in our boat, you, uh, you'll be able to know, my friend, that Jesus is in your boat because you can feel His holy presence. We need to seek God's guidance each day of our life. My friend, I'm telling you today that no matter what kind of storm, no matter what kind of storm you in, Jesus will always be with you. Now I want you to remember what this message was about. It's about the perfect storm. That when you go through the storm of life, and what do you do to make it safely to the shore? Number one is to remember. Remember the promise of Jesus. And ladies and gentlemen, that wasn't just a statement. That was his promise, and also that that was also his prophecy. And remember when you're in the storm, the promise of Jesus that you will get to the other side. He said, I'll never forsake you. As I said a moment ago, he said, he'll never forsake you. And the second thing that I said there was also, not only you must remember the promise of Jesus, but next time you're in the storm, you need to rest in the presence of Jesus. Because the disciples, they were in the presence of Jesus, my friend, and they still doubted. Devil will make you put doubts in your mind, my friend. You'll go to church and the preacher will preach his heart out. But the devil will begin to put thoughts in your mind. He'll use everything in the world to distract you. He'll be wanting to know what you're going to go, where you're going to go eat at, what you're going to do after church, or what fishing hole you're going to, or, or what golf course you're going to, and still listening to the Word of God. Oh, the devil, my friend, he's out there. He is out there to deceive you. So we need, next time you're in the storm, we need to rest in the presence of Jesus. And don't let the devil rob you of that. And again, we said, rely on the power of Jesus. Rely on the power of Jesus. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you today that if you are in this big storm, Jesus will take care of you. He's in the boat with you. And don't you ever, ever forget that. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this few minutes that we've had, Father, to broadcast the name of my Savior and my Lord, and tell people about Jesus to bring this message that you have laid on their heart. Father, we stutter and stammer around here, but Lord, we know that God, that you love us, and that Lord, that you give us the opportunity, Father, to preach your word. And Father, we pray for that soul that's nearest hell. We pray, Father, for that father, that mother, that daughter, that son. Father, we just pray that you will speak to their heart, and that, God, that they realize, Lord, that they need you in their life. And, Father, I pray now, Lord, for this radio station. I pray, God, that you will use this station here in a mighty way in this county. That, God, that it will just go out and reach out, Father, to the lost. And that, God, that you have a plan for this station. And, God, you have a plan for each servant, each minister that comes in here and stands behind this microphone, we know that you have a plan for them as well. Now, Father, again, go with us. Father, lead us and guide us and direct us. And forgive us, O Lord, where we have failed thee. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.
Friends and neighbors, time has come and gone again. Our message has uh, finished. We've finished our message here that God had laid upon our heart. And we hope and pray that you will continue to listen to the music here at this radio station. And that the music is played uh, from this uh the, uh, the right side ministry has been uh, will be a very spiritually uplifting to you. So until you hear my voice again, my prayers will be with you. So if you'd like to correspond with this ministry, you can write to the right side ministry, post office box 1346, Berea, Kentucky, 40403. Until you hear my voice again, my prayers will be with you.
shout it out, it's sealed forevermore. It's in that book of life, kept by the Judgment Day My name will not be lost Misplaced or overlooked For it's kept safely in God's record book Yes, there's a record book My name is written it was recorded there when I was born again. No one can blot it out, it's sealed forevermore. It's in that book of life kept by the Lord. It's in that book. Of life kept by the Lord. Jesus came into this world to seek. And save the lost The devil tried Everything To keep him from the cross But Jesus walked on Though tempted and tried Up Calvary's hill He was crucified Crucified Oh, Jesus stayed On the cross Though the devil mocked him that day oh, Jesus stayed on the cross so you and I could be saved if there's anyone but God's only son gets glory may God forbid oh Jesus stayed on the cross and I'm so glad that he did Jesus heard them laugh and say, Come down from the cross. As his blood flowed down the tree, He paid sin's dreadful cost. Darkness came down, it is finished, He cried. Now all who believe have eternal life. Eternal life, oh Jesus stayed. On the cross, though the devil mocked him that day, Jesus stayed on the cross so you and I could be saved. If there's anyone but God's only Son gets glory, may God forbid. Oh, Jesus stayed on the cross, and I'm so glad that He did. Jesus stayed on the cross Though the devil mocked him that day Jesus stayed on the cross So you and I could be saved If there's anyone but God's only Son Gets glory, may God forbid Oh, Jesus stayed on the cross and I'm so glad that he did G 
Jesus stayed on the cross And I'm so glad that He did Glad that He did Thank you ladies and gentlemen for tuning in today to the Right Side Ministry broadcast and we hope and pray that each time that you tune us in that there's been a message and song that's been played that's been a blessing to you or a uh, message uh, from God's Word that has been a spiritually uplifting to you. If you would like to correspond with this ministry you can write to the Right Side Ministry P.O. Box 1346 Berea, Kentucky that's B-E-R-E-A, Kentucky 40403. That is if you have prayer requests that you would uh, like f- for me to take to the throne of grace about. Well, I will not mention names on the air, but I will take them to the Lord in prayer each time I go to the Lord in prayer. And Or if you would just like to correspond with this ministry, just write to the address, sir, that I just gave you, P.O. Box 1346, Berea, Kentucky 40403. I hope and pray today that each time that you tune this program in, the program has been a blessing to you. So until you hear my voice again, my prayers will be with you. So have a good day, and God bless you.